Hey everyone, welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I am Bueller. Today is episode 135 of the brand new coffee and comic show. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I'm not alone. I got my good friend Bob here with me. Bob, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, we're on episode 135. Yeah. I mean, man, we just keep trucking along. Well, that's how it goes. It goes up in order. You this know, is it true. doesn't go this backwards. But I'm ready to talk about some comics today, and it feels good to be here. Is that what we do? That's what we do. That's what we Maybe do. Maybe drink a little bit of coffee along the yeah, way. Yeah, let's talk about the coffee we're drinking. <laughs> it's provided by Mocha Express, the official coffee shop, a local coffee shop of comics with Bueller, and let's just say everything comics as well, because, you know, he doesn't talk about the other place anymore. I didn't talk about anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. <laughs> just, just skip right by that. But Bob, what are you drinking today? Uh, today, um, let me see if I can do this right. I have a six-shot Americano with sugar-free pumpkin spice and just a splash of cream. Nice. So why do you get the shots? Ah, uh, usually um, I'll get the shots like that when yeah. I'm waking up and my first cup of coffee is doing nothing. Yeah. Uh, because I'm just that tired. Yeah. I needed a breakthrough this morning. So let me tell you something. Something I found out from our local coffee shop. What's that? Shots have less caffeine than regular coffee. Really? Did you know that? I did not know that. Neither did I. He might be lying. I think he is, because uh, I've never gotten zinged off of, well, you know, if I was to guzzle six cups of coffee. Yeah. You know. he, no, he said that literally coffee itself has more caffeine than the, just the shots. So there you go. Is that true? I don't know. Well, but I have no reason to not believe the, the guy, right? Now, if you have eight ounces of coffee, I can see that having slightly more caffeine than a shot. Right, but when you accumulate shots together, I'm assuming that you know you're nope. per per drink, nope. you're going to end up getting more than having to drink a good gallon of coffee. Nope. You, you, you just, you just you did, nope. <laughs> yeah, I understand what I was told, right? I gotta go with the guy. All right. He's never steered us wrong, right? No, he hasn't. He hasn't. All right. What am I drinking? I'm drinking this. What is that? It's a cold brew with a little bit of creamer in there and some hazelnut flavoring, and and you know what? It's nice outside, and the summer's coming to an end. Yeah. Uh, Nice little cold drink right here. It's pretty. I think it has good. come to an end. It's like the first day of fall happened this week, didn't it? I don't pay attention to the seasons. No? No. Do you? Yeah, there are four of them. Is there? Yeah. What's autumn? <laughs> We're in it right now. What's fall? Same thing. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Not one bit. <laughs> Anyway, that's what we're going to do today. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and give a uh, rundown of the show real quick and tell you what we're going to cover. We're going to start off the show with some thank yous and some announcements. We'll go to our first five brought to you by Bird City Comics. We'll go on to our topic brought to you by Black Box Comics. Our topic is what are people investing in or what are people speculating in? Last week we talked about speculation and we talked about like uh, influencers or YouTubers making videos about speculation. We asked the question for the viewer, the people watching us right now, what are you guys investing in? Because you always hear what we recommend. Mm -hmm. We want to hear what you guys recommend. So that's what we're going to focus on this week is what you guys out there, the, the regular people, we're regular too, but the regular people who don't like sit in front of the camera sometimes right. and look like idiots and stuff like that, like the cooler people out there watching, yep. we're going to hear from you guys what you guys are putting your money in and investing in and go from there. Uh, we'll go to our final five, also brought to you by Bird City Comics. We'll do Robbie's Pick of the Week, and uh, I think you read that pick, so you might be able to give some info. I didn't read it, but we'll talk about that yeah. later. Uh, we'll have our Was It Good segment brought to you by Comics on Coffee. That's where we talk about the books we read and what we're going to read next week. And we also have our Random Thoughts brought to you by our patrons. Our Random Thoughts today are going to be a... Uh, I want to give you guys a quick bus update on how I'm doing. I've been working on that. Um, I'm going to address last week's topic and a comment that was left on last week's uh, topic as well. I normally don't do that, but I kind of want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk about a couple shows. I know Bob watched the What If, mm -hmm. and I also watched the latest episode of Why the Last Man. So we'll give our opinions on that. And then uh, we'll kind of uh, wrap it up. I think that's about it. I mean, be, we good. don't have the mystery box thing because we're kind of taking a break from that for a little while. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I think, sounds good. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. I don't know. What do we do next? Uh, well, we're going to do our first five, right? No, we do announcements. Announcements. That's right. Who's hosting this show? You are. What are you asking me for? <laughs> we'll skip right over that part. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I just want to show off my comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, first off, some thank yous and announcements. Mm -hmm. 
First off, we got two giveaways today. Woo! And uh, we'll have a giveaway here coming up here in a second. We'll have another giveaway towards the end of the video, and we'll tell you how to enter those giveaways. Um, I want to give you guys a quick update on my next exclusive. More information is coming this week. I actually finally saw a rough draft of it, finally. It's been a long time. It's pretty cool. And uh, hopefully this week I'll be able to share something with you guys more so. So please sign up for the Indiegogo newsletter. doesn't cost nothing. You just enter your email and you get up to date and you... You pretty much will probably know before I do, to be totally honest. Um, I want to say thank you to our Super Chats from last week. We had Metal Clergy and also Robert Galvin with the Super Chat. So thank you, both of you. That does help us out quite a bit. Keeps the lights going and keeps the wheels, wheels rolling. rolling. <laughs> keeps the gas flowing. There you go. <laughs> I'm talking about the stuff you put in the car, not what's going on behind the scenes right now. By the time you get done on the road, you're going to have this thing flowing. <laughs> That's right. Oh, look at you. Dang. Okay. Let's, let's not do that again. Um, I also want to say thank you to our Patreon members. All our Patreon members, if you want to join our Patreon, it's the price of one comic book a month, three ninety nine or four dollars. If you think Bob and myself are worth one comic book a month, go ahead and join our Patreon. It does help us out quite a bit. It does all that stuff we just talked about as well. Yeah, and thank you. That being said, we're doing a giveaway right now for our Patreon members. This is just for our Patreon members, and this was, book was donated to us from the creator. It's right here. It's actually the trade paperback of this book right there. It's Hot Valley Days and Cocaine Nights. I talked about this book quite a bit when it came out. I really enjoyed it. This is the whole series. This is not a book for kids. If you're not interested in this book, uh, just say you don't want to win it or whatnot. But this is just for our current patrons, or you can join our Patreon, and I will pick a random winner to win that book. It doesn't matter if you're overseas. We'll ship it. It's not a problem. But I want to just let you guys know this is a mature rated book. Mm -hmm. This is definitely dealing with subject matters. It's not for kids. And if you get this book and you're not into that thing, you open the page, and whoa, Bueller wasn't kidding. <laughs> You've been warned. You've been warned. <clears throat> but this is the first giveaway for our Patreon members, and we'll have another giveaway later that's for everybody. So there you go. All right, so that's just kind of a quick rundown of that and the giveaways and the thank yous. Let's go ahead and go to our first five, brought to you by Bird City Comics. Go to Bird City Comics, enter the code Bueller. Save 10% on all their books and all that stuff they got over there. They got t-shirts and hats and stuff as well. So 10% off. If you off, need you to clothe your children, you can use the Bueller code to do it. <laughs> I don't know. Back to school, baby. There you go. <laughs> Bob, go ahead. You're up first. Sure thing. Uh, just recently, of course, we went to um, Rose City Comic Con, and um, I went to the Aftershock booth, and I picked up another set of We Live. Of course, some of these are right. second and third prints. Uh, and some variants. So here's uh, issue number one. Not a bad choice. Not a bad choice at all. Uh, issue number two. This one is uh, worth a little bit of money. This is a Hive, I think the Hive Comics variant. Mm -hmm. I don't know which. It, it's a variant. Yeah. And then uh, issue number three. This is a series that I enjoyed immensely. I can't wait for it to start back up in December. Here's number four. And then, of course, issue number five. Actually, and there's all my like first five. Five bucks a piece or whatever? Or? Yeah, they, they were actually re really cheap. Yeah. It was really cool. I noticed one thing at the Aftershock booth because they were there a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple years ago, they sold out everything in their booth. Everything. Really? I don't, I don't doubt it. The whole, Every table was empty with hours ago on Sunday. They did not do that this time, unfortunately. So. Just a reminder, I completely forgot to bring it. And I, I you know, I know that you're getting rid of books, so if yeah. you don't want this, it's okay. But I did pick up a copy of uh, the um, uh, Comics Pro uh, version of uh, Shadow Doctor for you, number one. Oh, the one that they had there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already got it. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Never mind. I saw it there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go on to my first five. And I got some Iron Man books. And the reason why I got these because this is one of the lots that was never paid for. From the auction. So there's actually, uh, this is the 30s lot. So 30 through 39, I have them all, but this is just the first five because that's kind of what we do. Um, this is Iron Man number 30, number 31, number 32, number 33, number 34. So there's five. I also have 35, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So the whole 30s. If you guys are interested in these, let me know because the person never contacted me and and the winning bid and whatnot, so I don't know. So I'm just gonna, they're just sitting in my randomly sitting there for no reason. So, right, right. And I'm pretty sure by this time I'm not gonna hear from the guy. Yeah, those books take me back to my childhood, man. Yeah, they're pretty good. 
<laughs> anyway, that's our first five brought to you by Bird City Comics. Like I said before, just go to their website. And then the code Bueller, save 10%, buy some clothes and some books and whatever you want. Get you some merch. Yeah, I don't care. You can get, well, whatever. So, all right, let's go ahead and go on to our uh, topic this week. And our topic is brought to you by Black Box Comics. You can go to their website, blackboxcomics.net. And then the code Bueller10, you save 10% off all their products on their website. I'm pretty sure they might have clothing too. I mean, you think about it, you could clothe the whole family with the Bueller code. That'd be kind of cool. Where That'd you be get really that shirt? Cool. Oh, I got ten percent off because of Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yeah. Clothing, books, and food. You can get all that with the Bueller code. <laughs> I mean, coffee. You can grind it. You know. Yeah, people yeah. Eat coffee beans. They do. They do. Yeah, so anyway, um, our our topic today, like I said, is what are you guys speculating on? What are you guys mm-hmm. investing your money in to make a profit? And we got a bunch of comments, and we're going to go ahead and start. So, Bob, you are up first. Sure thing. So, the first uh, comment comes from Scott Thielen. He says, uh, I'm investing in next-generation Marvel characters like Miles Miles Morales, Morales. Young Avengers, and Moon Knight. Uh, They have lower point of entry and room to grow. Um, I don't know about Moon Knight being a newer character. Probably not new, but definitely room to grow. But he's definitely going to be more popular. Absolutely. Very soon. Um, would you put X-23 in there? That's another character. I, I would. It, it, you know, it, it's funny. I'm, I'm surprised that uh, X-23 isn't uh, in the forefront as much as she was. Yeah. Uh, but that's another character. Uh, another one that would be a great point of entry is Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amadeus Cho, which is, you know, the, the uh, young Hulk. I can't remember the, the actual name. Hulkling or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and so there's there's a number of newer characters that definitely people yeah. are investing in that have room to grow. Silk is another one. Is the X-23 character, is that the little girl that was in the Logan movie? I mean, it's it loosely based on it, is yeah. Is that who that's supposed to be? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they ever really say. but Yeah, um, I mean, they basically allude to the fact. In the movie, they allude to the fact that it's his daughter. But basically, they took DNA from mutants and created their own yeah. uh, kids with them. Yeah, and so she has the th- things on her feet, right? Um, spikes on her feet. Yeah. She has so the spikes X, on her feet. X-23 does as well. Yes. And just two spikes. She has two and then, and then two one. in the feet. Yeah, one in the foot. Yeah. One in the foot, two on the hands. Two, two in the hands. Like the X-23 character. Yeah. So that's pretty much the same. Yeah, as I said, it's loosely based yeah. on it, right? They don't say <laughs> that she's actually his daughter, but she's from his DNA. So Yeah. Yeah. So on newer characters, when you're investing in them right now, like you said, it's a lower, lower entry point. But let's be honest, some of them have skyrocketed. Yeah, the Miles it's, Morales is yeah. not an easy entry point, especially if you want his first appearance. Yeah, I mean, his is outpacing established characters that have been around for 30, 40 years. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. It's it's kind of a strange, uh, some of them really hit really high, and like Miles Morales is definitely one that has, and it's just, I mean, the entry point, the, the door for, to, to get into that one is closing really fast. Yeah. And it looks like that's the way it's going to stay. So for sure, but I but you can still hop on the new Miles Morales series. That's a really easy entry point. Yeah, you know, just like back in the day, you're not going to get Werewolf by Night. You know, from a Moon Knight's first appearance very easily. But you can definitely hop on Moon Knight number one, even yeah. the one back in 1980. You can still hop on that one for an affordable price and move forward with Moon Knight as well. <clears throat> Do you think that the like the newer stuff is more influenced by manga? Well, I, I I think Jim Lee opened the door to that. Okay. I mean, if you look at you know X Men number one and the stuff he was doing on X Men, there was a lot of manga influence in his panels, right? And uh, so I I think that that's there. And then as we've progressed, I think we've got a lot more of that influence and flavor there. Yeah. I think Boom Studios has really lent uh, into that a lot. Yeah. And I think Marvel and a few of the others have started to uh, you know kind of join that that because like, let's just face it, manga way outsells any. Oh, yeah, that's when it comes to comics. Yeah. And so it, it would make sense to try to add that flavor into comics to try to bring in some more people. Uh, younger generation seems to really like it. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, it's it's definitely there and the influence is there. Yeah, so if you tie it to newer characters, mm-hmm. you probably won't get as much of a backlash as you turn like an established character yeah, into no, I'd like agree. a manga type thing. So. For sure, I would agree. All right. All right, Bob, you got the next one as well. Yep. All right, next one comes from Michael Hake. He says, uh, when I started buying comics, I guess I was seduced that they could become valuable. You're not the only one, pal. Hmm. Not always the case. However, I suggest buying Silver Age comics and sitting on them for years. There was not a large amount of copies printed back then, uh, so they aren't always easy to find. 
Uh, little story I have, my LCS has a copy of Iron Man number one selling for $300 Canadian. I have a copy. Took a photo and showed it to them. Uh, was told it could fetch $1,000 Canadian. I bought that comic in 1983 for $6 Canadian. Like any investment, one needs to be patient. And sometimes you don't. Yeah. Because sometimes you buy something that's killing the children mm -hmm. for $4, and like a year and a half later, you sell it for uh, $1,200, and you buy your friend a biscuit for breakfast. That's right. <laughs> And you fund your whole trip. You know? <laughs> <It's good. laughs> oh, that's great. Um, Did you not like the breakfast? I bought. Is, is that what this is about? No, no, no. No, the breakfast was okay. I just wasn't in the mood. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't in the mood. I don't know. We were pretty tired. That yeah, day. yeah. Uh, first off, Silver Age books. There was actually more copies printed that you think they just didn't make it. They were recycled. They were thrown away. You know, there's. Back in the day, I mean, you know, there was hundreds of thousands of books being printed yeah. all the time. So, like, Silver Age books, Golden Age books, there was more copies of those being printed than there are copies of books printed right now. Sure. Because they were on newsstands and everywhere and stuff, and they just printed them. It's just that they got recycled and destroyed and all that stuff, so the, there's not as many now because they were destroyed. Um, but there actually was a pretty decent print run for those. Um, I have a copy of Iron Man number one which was a great present from Two Brothers Comics. It's yeah. one of my favorite books. It's one of the ones I kept. Uh, a lot of people have asked me what books I've kept after I've sold my stuff in the auction. I'm going to do a video showing those books, uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks or whatnot, so you guys will see what I have. Uh, but yeah, uh, being patient, I, I agree with them. I think Silver Age books are, are a good investment. They always are. They never go down in price, you know, for the most part. Even the, like this stuff right here, which is like common stuff. You know, some of them are keys, but some of them are just regular books. They're not going to go down in price. Right. They're going to keep the value, and through time they'll just naturally go up with inflation and stuff like that. Sure. Um, and that's kind of where you, how you get on Silver Age books. So, I mean, you can buy a nice run of Silver Age books and put it together and sell them in a lot. You can make a, a decent amount of money on those. I mean, Absolutely. I, just, I sold quite a few in my auction, and I was like, Man, they're doing really good because they're all put together. You know, all the work is done for you and finding right. all that stuff. So I, that's a solid investment. That's one of the probably the better things to do is Silver Age books. Golden Age books are really hard to get, really hard to get. Silver Age books are still obtainable uh, for decent prices and stuff like that. You don't have to break the bank. You do on the big keys, of course, but you sure. can get the other stuff, and those will always you know, gain the value. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're looking to buy bigger keys. Uh, I would focus on the smaller books and put runs together like you're exactly yeah. saying, uh, and then basically sell you know those those runs uh, to build up to your you know to the keys that you want. Yeah. And then when you see how easy it was to actually build up those runs, now you can add and make build that run again with your key now, and then you got everything. There you go. So, all right, Jonathan Baker. He says uh, if an indie title as a big has a big name writer or drawer like Robert Kirkman. That's always a smart idea to get several copies, and that's what I always do. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I've said many times, indie titles are easy bets. Yeah. To buy in, it's cover price. Just buy number one, you're good to go. Um, there's an explosion of indie titles this year um, as far as being the, like, the number one books and stuff, and a lot of stuff was just going crazy. You know, yeah. Prices were going nuts. You know, Noctera, the current one that kind of hit, you know, just a couple weeks ago, that's... Twenty twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, Philadelphia number one. It's an easy buy in, and then plus the bonus is you get to read the story of something new. So I always tell people pick up number ones. I think there was one by Dark Horse, Last Flight Out, mm -hmm. and I think that kind of hit as well. I don't know why, right? But they were sold out at the comic shop, and uh, I was surprised because they had a stack of them like one day, and they were all gone the next day. I think it's probably selling for like twenty bucks. I could be wrong. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I think indie comics are always a good investment. Not only for the, the value that they might have potentially have, but just to read the story and to get something new. Some great stories going on <laughs> in indie comics right now. And, uh, you know, not, not just from the more popular ones like, you know, Image Comics, of course. Um, but so for some of your smaller indies right now, great writing. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that's a, that's a good investment either way. Whether you're looking to invest, you know, long term or you're looking for the quick investment right now for, to get the entertainment value, those indies are really, <coughs> yeah. are really good choices right now. He talked about the, like, well-known names doing the stuff. This guy right here who did this book, the actual the issues of this 
are hard to find. Mm. And uh, you might not be a household name in the creator or whatnot, but uh, these are worth quite a bit of money if you get the number one, two, and three. They just didn't print a lot of them. And they're beautiful quality books, and there's a couple, <laughs> let's just say, lovely variants. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pair of them or whatnot that are on the cover and stuff, and uh, you know, they don't always have to be a Robert Kirkman book. Sure, you know, but uh, I think the thing to remember is is that you know that that's good advice. You know, hot writers or, or hot yeah. artists, uh, but remember, you know, you can't buy everything. Yeah, uh, you never know what's going to pop, and so buy what you like. Focus on artists that you know you like. And uh, because I mean, even with uh, James uh, Tynion, who's like the hottest right now, uh, sure, something is killing the children exploded. Um, And he's got newer books that are coming out right now that are, I mean, they're selling huge amount of copies. Yeah. You know, I don't know if they're going to spike as much as something is killing the children did, but don't look at it as I'm going to make a lot of money off of this. Uh, Just collect what you like. Yeah. And and you'll you'll be okay either way. Yeah, I don't agree with that at all. Not at all. You no. <laughs> just buy everything to make money. There we go. <laughs> and everything else sucks. There we go. All right. Love the attitude, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got the next one here. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, my doctor, Logan Lumpkin. Logan he says I will buy and sell any book I'm uh, confident I can make a quick profit on. When it comes to speculation, I'm always buying up keys for movies or shows that are two to three projects ahead. I'm also buying up all the X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Cosmic Keys I want for myself right now. Um, There's a lot of people buying those right now in anticipation for where the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going and what they do in the future. Um, A lot of people are kind of doing that right now. That's kind of the the X-Men were flying off the shelf as far as... Like when I was doing my auctions, they were selling for huge amounts of money and stuff like that. And Fantastic Four, I think, is right right behind them right now. Um, I think that, uh, I don't know, I think they're inflated right now. I think those books are really inflated. If you can get them for a good price, great. But really, I think that those books are, God, I think they're, we don't even know what they're doing. You know, yeah, sure, they'll be there someday. But, you know, they made three other Fantastic Four movies. They made nine X Men movies, you know. So it's not new. No, you know, it's not. It's not a new universe coming in there. It's just being part of an existing universe and stuff. And a successful one. That I think yeah. that's that's the, the the bigger draw right yeah, now. Yeah, but is. you know, like I said, X Men was extremely sure. successful. Sure. I mean, it was like it's A and one A. That's what it is. And there's no, you know, is there is Hugh Jackman probably going to come back and play Wolverine? Probably not. You know, it's going to be hard to replace that guy. Is it going to be hard to replace Patrick Stewart as Professor X? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's some people that were cast in those X-Men movies who were perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're probably not coming back. No. Okay. So it's like, like you get second pickings or whatnot. You know? Sure, sure. Um, and, and, you know, the, the newer cast that, that came out, like, you know, with James McAvoy as, as uh, Professor X and, uh, you know, Fassbender as, as Magneto, I think they did a great job. Yeah. But really, when they start coming back out with the X-Men universe, I want new characters. I don't want those Fox characters to come into the MCU. Yeah. So I want them to give us a completely new team and start fresh. I'm hoping that Chris Evans reprises his role as Human Torch. That would be amazing. <laughs> How would that work? I don't think it would, <laughs> you know, or, or bring back uh, Michael B. Jordan. But, you know, even though he was Killmonger, but he could play a human it's torch. It's kind of interesting that both the human torches have other roles in Marvel. Uh, isn't it? <laughs> kind of screwed yourself on that one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got the uh, next one as well. This is from uh, Amanda uh, Sparger. Sparger? Uh, it's close enough. That's what it looks it says, like. I invest my money on comic books that I enjoy reading. I know I'm wild like that. You're wild. (laughs) Those books hold sentimental worth, and the price never drops after six months. Collecting books for money these days is a waste of time. Everyone and their mother is doing it these days. (laughs) That sounds kind of... Never mind. Uh, Collecting comics now is like collecting lottery tickets and holding on to them in hopes they will increase in value the longer you have them. Okay, first things first. Um... Most of the comments that we had on this topic, and I think we kind of lend ourselves to the reader mm-hmm. more so than the person who's investing in comics. Sure. And it just kind of goes hand in hand. So, so most of the, the reason why I picked this one, 
most of the comments, half of them or more, were like, hey, I don't buy for speculation. I don't buy for investment. I buy because I read it and I enjoy collecting. And uh, that's who we cater to, to be totally honest. You guys have watched our videos. You guys know this. You know, that's what we talk about most of the time. Right. Not to say that we don't sell our comics. Right? I mean, we have sold our comics. We have made I've never a profit. sold a comic. You just got done with 5,500 auctions. No, I didn't. <laughs> Next thing to stop it is about auctions. By there way. we go. <laughs> never sold a book. Right, but, that, but, that's, um, but that's not the reason why we're in this, is what yeah, I'm trying to say. exactly. Because uh, we do like it for the, you know, the, for the story, for the reading and all that yeah. stuff. The, extra, the other stuff is a bonus. And actually, the other stuff that we do, like the auctions, was a way for me to get to some other place I want to be. So that's why I was doing it. That's yeah. why I was selling the books. But anyway, like I said, most of the comments were like, "I don't, I don't buy for, for speculation or value or whatnot. I like it, the collecting. I like the, you know, I'll never get rid of them. I'll never sell them or whatnot. So I can appreciate those people that do that because I'm the, for the most part, the same way. Mm -hmm. And that's why we like doing this this content. Yeah. Now she also says, uh, everyone's doing it right now and they're not really worth anything. That's obviously. Uh, not the case. No, it's a blanket statement. Yeah, and uh, so I understand where you're coming from, Amanda, but there is money to be made, mm -hmm. and some people do it better than others. Sure. And, uh, I mean, some people make a living off it, you know, and can make a living off it out, out of their living room. Absolutely. And stuff. So there is money to be made. It's just, it takes a lot of effort. There's a lot of work involved to do it, and a lot of research as well uh, to be able to make a living and stuff just selling comic books. So if you want to do that, you can. There's people who do it. Absolutely. And uh, that's all I do. So, I mean, like I said, it's a lot of work. A I don't, lot of work. I don't want to do that. You have to have a lot of room, too. Yeah. Uh, but thank you, Amanda. I appreciate that. And I thank you for representing the reader and people like uh, Bob and myself and just who enjoy the books and don't really look at the monetary value all that much. So um, I got the next one as well. This is from Jean-Claude Van Tom. I'm sorry, was there anything else on that last one you want to? No, I, th I, th I think you hit it You hit it right. I mean, you know, we, we know what we're about. Yeah. I, I would say that, you know, that's that they, if they're not worth anything. Yeah. Uh, there, there are ways to invest and, and be able to make money. If you're, you know, just collecting blue chip books, like, mm -hmm. you know, the Silver Age, like we've talked about, uh, and you hold on to them, uh, they are not going to go down in price. So yeah. that is a, a reasonable investment. And, you know... I mean, in the beginning, the money that you're putting down is the money that you have into it. But eventually, over time, those will climb. They will keep climbing. They're not going to go down in price. Yeah. And they are worth something. There so, you go. All right. So I got the next one from John Claude Van Tom. All right. I love the name. I know. I sell books from time to time, but not really buying books to make money. If I was buying books to flip, I would go with something that's killing the children. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Or the earlier issues of something that's killing the children. Sure. And some of the 1 in 50 or 1 in 100 incentives seems to be the correct places to make some money. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, ratio or incentive variance. I don't know if I agree with that. Because I think it's kind of a crapshoot when it comes to which ones are great and which ones don't hold their weight. You know, and I go, I, I know you've bought some of those. Yeah, I have. Yeah, and what's your thoughts? So, you know, in the beginning when, they, when, when, it, when some of the first ratios started coming out, you know, my mindset was in that place of, wow, you know, because this is a lower print run, yeah. this is going to be worth something. And I very quickly stopped buying with that type of mindset because I could see if I looked at the history when I did the research that that wasn't always the case. So I started buying the ratios when the artwork really grabbed me and I just had to have it. Yeah. And so that's kind of the way that I buy ratios now. Um, with the number of ratio variants that I've bought, I, I think I've made you know more of a, a profit off of uh, store exclusives than sure. I have off of the actual ratio variants. Yeah. Um, like I, one of the first ones that I got was a Christmas present from my wife. It was Daredevil number 612, the J. Scott Campbell cover. Um, I, I have had that signed since and slabbed, which is a great book. Um, but I mean, I know that she probably paid like a hundred bucks for it. And I would say here we are, what, three years later and the, I think it's gone down in price. Yeah. And so, you know, just because it's a ratio of it doesn't always mean it's going to hold value or be more valuable because it's a lower print run. It has to do with what people are into right now. Yeah. And if they're hot on that book, you'll see the price go off. But just as quickly, that, that price can go down when it, when it goes cold. Yeah. So, it seems like the ratio ones are hot right then. 
as they're not very soon after. Um, unless they're really good artwork that people, when they see it, like the jock cover, yeah. right? And that's not a ratio variant, but that's an example of people have to have it for that artwork. Yeah. And there are very few ratio variants that are like that. I, when, I was, when I was doing the top 10 video, I'm going to start doing those again. I'd show covers I like, you mm -hmm. know, or, or whatnot, and I would always end it by, this has a regular cover price of $3.99. I, I had a lot of people say, hey, man, I mean, there's a 1 in 50 ratio variant in there. There's no way it's $3.99. You know, it's not going to be that price. And that's not the regular cover price. Well, there is no such thing as a regular cover price for a ratio variant. There's no set price at all. It's whatever they want to sell it for. It still says three ninety nine on the back of that book. So, truthfully, what you're saying is, is that when that book comes out and it's printed, it's a three ninety nine book. Yeah. It's what the comic shop yes. decides to sell it for. Yeah. That's, right. Because that's who's setting the price. Yeah. The comic shop's not paying any more than three ninety nine for that book, exactly. or, or whatever their their um. I mean, they're paying, they're paying for all the other books. Right. But it's the same price. And so if they're buying tw 50 copies of cover A, it's 2 bucks a book. And then that uh, 1 in 50 ratio, it's still $2 for that book. Exactly. Now, like I said, the comic shop is setting the price. So that way when people are like, oh, what's the price going to be? I don't know. I mean, your comic shop could sell it for whatever they want. There is no set price. Right. If they want to sell it for the, I think the common thing is if it's a 1 in 50, they sell it for 50 bucks. I could be wrong on that. I don't really know. But like a 1 in 10, they sell like 10 bucks or something. Like that. Maybe, I don't know if that's the the going rate or whatnot, but there is no set cover price yeah. for ratio variants except for the actual cover price that it says. Yeah, you know, on that, I, I, I'd like to do a little more research because I've thought about this quite a bit. Mm -hmm. When it comes to ratio variants, there are actually very few comic shops that can actually afford to get those. Yeah. They're not going to buy the however many copies to get that particular ratio, especially like the one in 200, you know, you know uh, and so you have the larger chain comic shops yeah. that, that get those, and then they start to sell those out to other comic shops who, in, who inquire of them, and of course other, other places, they yeah. put them out on eBay. And I think they're the ones that are setting the price more than anybody else based upon the demand that people are calling in with. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that that is setting the price more than anything else. Well, I think what probably sets the price more than anything is the cover of the price of what they have to buy to get it. That's what it is. Well, I mean, people will order 200 copies of a book, okay, right. and to get that one in 200 ratio variant, okay, they will set that price to cover those 200 books that they had to buy to get it. I see what you're That's saying. That's what there's, what's because they don't have a problem buying them if they know that they can sell that book to to cover the price of those of those books, or that or that they can sell them exactly. So if there's 50, if it's a one in 50, and you got to buy 50 copies, okay. And it costs you a hundred dollars to buy fifty, so two dollars a book. Mm -hmm. And you sell that one in fifty for a hundred bucks. So you just made all your money back. Plus, you have all fifty copies of the other books that you can sell. Yeah, for cover price or whatever you want. That's how they. That's how they actually base the price of what they want to do when they get those. Um, I, I would agree, except in the, in the past, from the same exact person mm -hmm. or seller who was get, who was uh, you know uh, sending that particular ratio variant to my comic shop so that I could buy it uh, same thing it was a one in 100 two separate ones one of them I got for 75 bucks and the other one I got for 125 yeah. bucks and so same you know amount of comics needed to create that that ratio sure but they gave me two set two different prices so you know how they're setting that I, I still think it is, could have been also set on the cover of the Price of the book itself. It's possible. If it was a three ninety nine book or four ninety nine or four ninety nine book. book. I also want I can to see that. I want a little inside information. A lot of people might not know this. Uh, exclusives covers mm -hmm. like uh, Moon Knight exclusive comics with Bueller cover. Order four thousand of those. Guess what? I qualify to get all the ratio variants. I I can get all the all the ones I qualify for because I'm buying four thousand copies of that. That's book. right. I get every one of those ratio variants. I can so, I can say that I want that. So where's my Moon Knight one in fifty, man? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's Bird City Comics. Right? <laughs> but I, I don't know if you guys knew that. But I mean, if you like, if I do an exclusive book, and I didn't figure this out until I saw my Aftershock one, I'm like, why are they sending me these books? Because mm -hmm. I got uh, like 200 copies of the Knock 'Em Dead, and they sent me a bunch of the one in tens. Mm -hmm. uh, the exclusive, and I'm like, I don't, I don't even realize why they did. And then I found out from someone else who does the stuff, like, yeah, you get all the ratio variants, and you can help, you can take those and sell those to help cover the cost of what you did. So if there's a one in a thousand butt crack cover, like I've talked about, you know what? Not the stupid Marvel ones that just right. have like a line down the middle, the right. blank ones. 
and sell it for a thousand bucks or whatnot. There you go. And you get your exclusive. So I don't know if you guys knew that, but uh, exclusive covers. Bueller selling butt crack, baby. Yeah. Really? <laughs> exclusive covers qualify for the ratio variants. You can get every one of them that uh, comes out of those books. So. I didn't know that. That's that's actually really interesting and, yeah. and something to keep in mind. All right, I got the, another one as well. This is from our buddy, John Stout. Hey, John. So uh, he says, if I were to guess on books that I uh, read currently could be turned into TV shows or movies, I think they would probably be uh, for a streaming service. So here's my pick. So he gave some examples. Mm -hmm. The Many Deaths of Layla Starr, Nice House on a Lake, Majori Finnegan, Temporal Criminal, and uh, Seven Secrets. I think all these titles would appeal to a uh, general audience and it could be uh, stretched out by writers using the concept for the series. He gave some pretty good ideas. I think yeah. that uh, a lot of people have talked about that Nice House on the Lake kind of has a uh, lost, lost feel, feel yeah. to it and mm -hmm. stuff. And he's probably loosely motivated by that. Yeah. Or maybe he's never heard of it. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. But I still haven't read that book. It's amazing. And I have them and I haven't read any of them yet. And I'm kind of waiting, I guess, because mm -hmm. there's so many words in it. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, a lot of people talked about the many deaths of Layla star and apparently that's narrated by a cigarette. So I don't know how you pull that off. Do you have that little like talking cigarette that was like, don't smoke or whatnot. The little cartoon guy walking him on the screen. <laughs> little googly eyes on it. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Maybe something like that. Um, no, we were just talking about, uh, seven secrets that kind of died off for you a little bit, right? Look, for me, it did. Yeah. I started losing interest. Uh, Majority Finnegan Temporal Criminal. That's kind of a. Uh, have you looked at that one? I have not. That one's a lot of fun. That's a little raunchy. That would definitely be a uh, FX show, which is probably or a streaming wide. service or something like that. So that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> but those are some good examples, and it's always nice to see something like. Uh, and we're going to be talking about a that Why the Last Man, which was a comic, and it's now a TV show. Yeah, we're going to be talking about that in a little bit. So you never know what gets translated into something eventually. So mm -hmm. I mean. It's kind of cool to kind of look and say, yeah, I remember reading that book. I remember seeing that book, and now it's on TV. You know, I'll be honest, I didn't even know Walking Dead was a car was a comic. Comic. And until I started watching the TV show, because I wasn't into comics back then. Right. And I was like, oh, this is a comic book? And now I'm collecting the whole Walking Dead uh, Deluxe, the color versions right now, which are pretty cool. So. Yeah. Anyway. All right, uh, let's see. You got uh, up. You're up next. All right, so last two. Next one comes from Bad Cookies. Uh, they say uh, I've been picking up a lot of the '80s toy line books: Thundercats, Silverhawks, Brave Star. I've seen a lot of people start doing that, and that's uh, by uh, Marvel. Put those out, and they put them on the, the Star Comics logo. Yeah, and stuff. And that was also that was from uh, Jim Shooter. That was kind of his baby. Bringing that stuff, trying in to there. leverage the TV all that he could. Yeah, and here's the thing about those books, they're they are hard to get in, in good condition because they, they were mainly kids' books and mainly kids bought those books. Mm -hmm. The Garfield, the Heathcliff, and stuff like that, and the Care Bears, all that stuff. Well, not a lot of people like us were buying them back then, right? Okay, but the people who were buying them were younger kids, and just like, oh, I can't wait to watch the Saturday morning cartoons. Yep. They'd sit there and they'd flip through them and watch the cartoons and whatnot. So it's a really, it's not a bad investment to get on those books if you can find them. Because they're out there and they made a lot of them. Yep. And uh, you can find them. But the key is to find them in good condition and kind of go from there. Thundercats, you know, that's a big one. And uh, I think that's worth quite a bit of money right now. He-Man, Master of the Universe, yep. that stuff. Even G.I. Joe and Transformers, they're already worth quite a bit of money. But some of the other more less common ones... You know, like Silverhawks or Brave Star, be on the lookout for those because I yeah. think uh, it's not a bad investment at all. And, and they're they're definitely going to be coming back around. I mean, it's only a matter of time until we get a Thundercat series. Um, I think they did a remake here recently, um, but I, I would say somebody pouring some more money into it, yeah. I think we're going to get that. And Silverhawks is ripe for the taking as well. And so, yeah, I think those are those are sound investments. Do you have any of those? Nope. See. Now, I remember when I when I was collecting, though, it's like a lot of those comics, besides the fact that they were kids' books, a lot of them they were in those th uh, thrifty drugstore three-packs. Yeah, I love those. And, the, you know, those stores threw those things around. And, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and so they were ruined by the time you got them half yep. the time. And uh, and so so because of that, when I first got into collecting, that started to appeal to me less because if I'm going to destroy a book, I'll, I want to destroy the book. Yeah. You know? 
And anyway, so yeah, it just didn't appeal to me as much at the time. Yeah. You just reminded me of something I wanted to talk about during the ratio variance. So you can now find the ratio variance in three packs at Walmart. Which is amazing. They're just randomly putting in one in a thousand or one in 500 things in there. That's like, great. Because like, they just have them sitting around apparently. Right. And they're putting them in there. And uh, I don't know how long that kind of devalues them, don't you think? Some lucky kid. Uh-huh. There you go. <laughs> All right. I don't even think any of our Walmarts around here care that stuff. They don't. So you got the last one. Sure thing. Last one comes from Jared Wallace, my good buddy. He says, uh, I have really consolidated what I'm collecting now. He says, I'm buying five to six books a month to read and then invest in Joker and Batman, Green Lantern and Spider-Man books for long term. Hoping to build my collection over the next 25 years and then see if it's worth selling for my kids. Yeah. I think that uh, a lot of people are passing up on DC stuff right now. Because if you ever watch any of those speculation videos... You know, a majority of it, or even like, uh, let's just say, uh, and like I said, I don't really consider it a speculation, but like uh, uh, Tom's top 10 video, most of it's Marvel. Yeah. You know, or the, the ones that are setting sales records or what, it's pretty much Marvel. So now's a good time to buy DC because you want to buy it when it's, people aren't thinking about it. That's right. When it's on the down low, you know, not when everyone's seen record sales and something trying to find it. Go find the stuff that, you know, is cheap right now because maybe the, uh, DC Universe, the movie universe, isn't that great. The best thing about it is that it can only get better. Okay, it's not, it's 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 sunk into a level to where you know people didn't like some of the movies or whatnot. I think they are getting better. Mm-hmm. You know, but I mean, hopefully it just goes it does get better and better and better. You sure. Know? I mean, so you want to buy it when it's low. You want to buy it when the popularity really isn't there. You want to buy Suicide Squad when the movie didn't do that well. Okay. And then maybe down the road it gets better and better. You know, you, you don't want to buy it when it's the number one movie in the land for a month straight, you know? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. You're paying what premium price and your return on investment, yeah, it might go up, but it's not going to go up much. You want to buy, you know, ten book, $10 book and sell it for 100 You don't want to buy a $100 book and sell it for 110 Right. So, I mean, that's the way I look at it. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, with, with the DC stuff, they've kind of shot themselves in the foot on two different sides. Uh, you know, the, their cinematic universe is not doing all that great. Uh, and then when you look at the comic side, I think their move on raising their prices and going with their future state stuff kind of shot them in the foot as well. Because there is not as much buzz right now on DC Books as there has been in the past. There should be. There should be. Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing is great. Nice Nightwing is great. Lake. You know, I don't read that Nightwing. Nightwing is amazing right now. Really? Yeah. They canceled it. No, they didn't. You don't they know. canceled it. Canceled. <laughs> it's a great topic. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. What would you invest in? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm the same way as with that first comment. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm picking up now, of course, you know, I, I still buy my, my Wednesday comics. I'm a Wednesday warrior. If those pop, they pop. Uh, but as far as actual investing, there's a lot of Silver Age books that I'm going after, uh, trying to build up, you know, runs like I talked about earlier so that I can eventually get the keys that I want. I mean, I'm, I'm still going after my Daredevil number one and my yeah. Fantastic Four number five. When I have those in my collection, I'll, I'll be satisfied. Everything else is basically building up to that. Nice. So, yeah. Not bad. How about you, man? I mean, you just sold everything. <laughs> I just sold everything. You know. Uh, but when you start back over it, you know, because you said that you are, right? Yeah. What are you going to invest in? Copies of Noctera. Copies? <laughs> you already got that. <laughs> yeah. Geiger. I'm on the lookout for, for 15 copies of Geiger. Knowing you. If I can pull off another... Something is killing the children. I mean, that's such an anomaly. Let's, yeah. let's, let's really think about that. Here's yeah. a book that sells for thousands of dollars that came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. That's Walking Dead type stuff. Yeah, okay? absolutely. If you can pull that off again, you know, and get multiple copies or something like that, I'd love it. Yeah. You know, so especially if you've only paid a buck a piece for them. Yeah. Knowing you, you'll start to build up your collection going across the country, hitting them 50 cent and dollar bin boxes because you do really well at that. Yeah. And next thing you know, you'll have another great collection. There you go. All in a van. <laughs> plus, plus the low run. <laughs> there there you, go. you go. All right. That's awesome. So that's our topic and our topic is brought to you by uh, Black Box Comics. You can go to their website, blackboxcomics.net and the code Beeler 10 and you save 10%. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our uh, final five. Mm-hmm. Brought to you by Bird City Comics. You guys know the deal. Buy some clothing. I guess some comic books nice. as well. 
ten percent off Bueller code, all the good stuff there. Um, Bob, you can go ahead and go first, my friend. Sure thing. Uh, I've been collecting a lot of martial arts comics lately. Uh, here's some. Uh, I just started reading these. It's a series called uh, Ako, or Oko. I don't know how you pronounce it, uh, but it's about a Ronin. I think it's a Coco. Do you think so? It's about a Ronin who... Uh, Last Samurai. No, it's not Last Samurai. <laughs> well, samurai without a master. That's right. Or, there you go. Right on. He's learning. Yeah, I watch That's X-Files. Right. <laughs> uh, but it's about, it's about a Ronin who leads a group of demon hunters, and uh, I love the artwork <laughs> inside of this. Uh, that runs in cycles. Like the, the, the first series is called The Cycle of Water, then yeah. Cycle Over. So I got a bunch of them. Right. Uh, here's some from The Cycle of Water. Uh, here's issue two. And then uh, this one is issue four. And then uh, I got some from The uh, Cycle of Earth. Uh, this one is uh, issue two. And then this one is four. They're kind of out of order. And uh, this one is number one. There and so, um, but I really enjoy the artwork inside of it. Love the covers, and it's a, a series I've never heard of before, and nice. I'm really enjoying it. Who publishes it? Uh, they're called. What does that say? I don't know. Arch, Arch, Archie, Archaea, Arch, Arch, Archie books. They're published by Archaea Studios, who Archaea. I've never heard of before. Yeah, but they're amazing books. Thank you, Archaea. Otherwise known as Archie. Archie. Archie Comics. <laughs> that was a long final five, but there you go. <laughs> All right, I got my final five right here. Mm-hmm. We're going to start off with some nun action, but I think it's a dude. Uh, but this is the uh, variant for the new uh, Seven Secrets. I think it's issue number 12. Boom Studio sent it our way. The nun who was a dude variant. Yeah, something like that. But the virgin variant for the nun. I think they're all virgin variants for the nuns, right? I, I, I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good joke, right? Yeah. Uh, or, 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 never mind. Never mind. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's, let's not get in trouble. Uh, vinyl, number two. Uh, another really good book. I had someone say to me, it's like, you, need, you guys need to stop with all your <laughs> any windows. <laughs> and I wrote back, in your endo. <laughs> We're just having fun. Oh so, my anyway, uh, King Spawn number two. This is a variant cover, I believe. And King Spawn number two, another variant cover right there. And then the last book right here, something's kind of special. Hmm. And look at Bob right there because he's going to get all, all sad face. Uh, but anyway, this is Invincible Iron Man number seven. And this is a 9.9 grade. I'm telling you right now, it's the best copy you can ever find. For this book, I kept this. I did not sell it because Bob's birthday is coming up, and I want to give it to my buddy Bob. Oh man! And there you go, my friend. Happy birthday, dude! Thank you very much. And that was just so you guys know. That was originally a gift to me from Steve Whiting, and I talked to Steve. I go, hey, I want to pay it forward and stuff. How do you feel? He goes, yeah, go for it. You know, and uh, Steve's pretty generous and stuff like that. So. From Steve to me to you, and glad that it's going to have a nice home with you and stuff. And I know I've told Bob, I said, you need to get that graded. He's told me to get it graded, so he, I think you got plans for that book. So. I do. Um, Gladiator is one of my favorite villains. That's what got me into the Daredevil comic book, Yeah, uh, is the original John Romita cover. And uh, I have a line in for private signings for John Romita. He's yeah. like 94 years old now. And um, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this off to have John Romita sign it, and then I'll have it graded and slabbed. Yeah. And um, thank you so much. You're very welcome. I think it's pretty appropriate because it's issue number seven, and he's going to be 70 years old. <laughs> all joking aside, thank you, buddy. You're welcome. <laughs> that is awesome. So there you go. Whew. Very cool. It's a very beautiful, cool. It's a beautiful book. And, and, and secondhand, thank you, Steve. <laughs> there you go. All right, so that's our uh, final five brought to you by uh, Bird City Comics. A lot of really cool books. Let's go ahead and move on to our buddy, mm-hmm. that guy that you guys, you have a thing with. Oh, Mr. Right. Robbie. Yeah, you, you rumble, rumble <laughs> down under right. or whatnot. Rumble in the Thund- jungle. Thunderdome. Uh. Whatever, whatever you guys are doing. But let's go ahead and go to uh, Robbie's Pick of the Week. My man, what's up? You're watching Comics with Bueller. In fact, you're watching the Coffee and Comics show, and I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups from Pop Culture Philosophers Somewhere Underneath the Sea. Anyway, not only am I the president of the Bob and Bueller fan club for men, I am also a member. And my pick of the week is... Frontiersman number one by Image Comics. 
Uh, of course, Robbie's pick of the week. Mm-hmm. He usually never goes and does anything wrong with his picks. Uh, I've had a chance to read this. I'll let you know when I get to our, our uh, Was It Good segment sure. and let you know what I thought about it. But uh, did you have a chance to read this one? No, I was too busy reading Group Meets the Tarzan, number five. <laughs> Just somebody said it was their pick of the week about a month ago. I was like, oh, it's so good. You you, you can't go wrong with those Gru books. <laughs> anyway, sometimes you miss. Sometimes you miss. But I've heard it's pretty good, and mm-hmm. I saw Robbie's review on it. He really enjoyed it. It mm-hmm. was a, kind of a lighter week yeah. uh, for books out there, so uh, the competition wasn't extremely great, mm-hmm. uh, but still some good books. But definitely he liked that one. That's why it made his pick of the week, so... I might give it a look. It's, uh, I guess it's about a superhero that's just kind of hanging out in the woods, chopping chopping down the forest, living off the grid or something. Something like that. We'll, yeah. we'll get into it. Yeah, there you go. So, not bad. I guess, uh, you know, he's Robbie's struggling right now, you know, because, uh, you know, the, his, his buddy is just, like, taking a breather. Taking a breather. Yeah, and he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, anyway, go check out Robbie's channel, Pop Culture Philosophers. Uh, he also does a uh, top 10 uh, picks with uh, Jim Mint. It's pretty Mint. good. They do mm-hmm. that every week. I've enjoyed uh, hearing their difference of opinions because they don't always agree on the books. And uh, just a whole bunch of his stuff he's doing. He's doing Horror Fest, which is a lot of fun. If you're yeah. into horror movies and stuff, he likes all that stuff. But there's a bunch of stuff on this channel that you can check out. And he's always looking for uh, um, a reason to play his little Joker theme music thing. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. This is true. But he also has, you know, he has his Rock and Robbie Live on Sundays. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've enjoyed here recently, uh, a lot of our viewers don't know this, but uh, on my Instagram, which is Bullseye Bob, yeah. uh, every Friday I post a, 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 um, a Kung Fu Friday. And I've been really enjoying that. I post a lot about martial arts movies and things like that. And uh, Robbie has been open to experiencing martial arts movies. Uh, you know, in a new way, yeah. movies he's never seen before, and I've really been enjoying his reaction to them because, oh, cool. uh, you know. So anyway, last week on Rock and Robbie Live, he reviewed the movie Hero. Mm-hmm. His reaction is classic. I absolutely loved it. But uh, he's uh, been reviewing some of the movies that I've suggested for him to watch. So check that out. It's a lot of fun. A nice night, guys. Patch things up. Yeah, yeah. You know, we. Yeah, you know, I'm just building up to a martial arts fight instead of a boxing match. But you know. You guys need to put it away. Put it, put, it, put it to rest. All right. All right, there you go. That's Robbie's pick. Way to go. Good job. Uh, okay, let's move on to our Was It Good segment. This is where we talk about books that we read. And what we're going to read, this is brought to you by Comics on Coffee. And that brings us to our second giveaway. All right. Uh, do me a favor. Go to their website, comicsoncoffee.com. You can go ahead and look at the different flavors that they have. And then come back to the video. Leave a comment. Tell me what flavor you like. And we're going to pick one of those uh, people who pick the flavor at random, and then you will win a bag of coffee, courtesy of Comics on Coffee. So like I said, just go check out their website, find a coffee you like, come back to this video, do a little little bit of research here, write down what coffee you like, and then we'll pick a winner and let them know, and they'll send you some coffee. So that's our second giveaway. It's awesome. And you can get free coffee. So there you go. Come on. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Light speed's my favorite. Yeah, mine's Outbreak. Outbreak? Yeah. Look at us. We're different. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and start off with our Was It Good segment. Yeah. We'll actually start off right here. Okay. Uh, because this one's on your list. Sure. And uh, so, Bob, mm-hmm. we're looking at Frontiersman number one. Mm-hmm. Hey, Bob. What? Was it good? Mm, it was good. Okay. It was good. Tell mm-hmm. me about good. it, Bob. So uh, I think Robbie ex- uh, <laughs> kind of explained it as, think of Green Arrow retired, living off the grid in the woods. Yeah. it's. I mean, you know, the character's nothing like the Green Arrow, but that that's a good analogy of it. Um, you know, he basically at one point was a superhero, um, and, you know, he, he kind of looked like a, a beefed up version of Daniel Boone. Uh, you know when he was when he was doing it, and uh, so he's kind of left that life behind, and he's in the woods off the grid, and now you got some people that are hunting him because they want him to help them with their cause, and uh, so you know the thing that I I really enjoyed it. The thing that I wasn't expecting was how political it got without preaching, yeah, because uh, it does get into some you know uh, political things about the environment and his stance on them, uh, and I think it played it out really well inside of the book. Uh, it, the dialogue was great, really well written, uh, and I'm excited to see where they go with it next. I was highly surprised with this book. Nice, man. I didn't read it yet. Uh, I'm probably not going to. Mm-hmm. Just be honest. can't read everything. Yeah. Yeah, but there it is. There it is. And I liked it. 
There it, you go. It was and, good. And Robbie liked it. He did. He so did. there you go. That's what you get. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to this one. What's in future number 20 with Spawn on the cover? Spawn. <laughs> you can't tell me that it doesn't look like Spawn. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. So what do you... Th- uh, Bob. Uh-huh. Was it good? When is it not? Uh... I've said it many times before. I think this is one of the best creative teams in comics right now. Yeah. Karen Gillan on the writing, Dan Moore on pencils, and Tamara Bonavillain doing the colors. Uh, I just love every page. It's it's eye candy. Yeah. Uh, the dialogue is really great. The flow of the story, uh, the way they've um, uh, subverted some of the King Arthur mythos. Uh, and so in this particular uh, book, we finally get to see Lancelot in action. We're 20 issues in, and we're finally mm-hmm. getting the Lancelot. Yeah. And uh, so the story is progressing to the point to where King Arthur has another challenge towards him right now. And uh, and then we get a little more of the back history on um, the main character's grandmother. I can't think of his name. Uh, her, his grandma, her, his grandmother, and uh, because she's a, a major player in all this. And so sure. I've, I've loved it all the way through. I'm going to continue to get this comic going forward. Uh, it's great every month. Nice, man. I'm glad to see you're happy about it. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to the next one. I've never read any of those. Mm-hmm. Moon Knight. Number three. There you go, Bob. Mm -hmm. Was that good? Let me just say this. I was expecting it to be bad. All right? Okay. Because last month... Uh, you know, compared to the first issue, to me, it kind of it kind of dipped. Hurt. It dipped. Yeah, you know? it dipped a little and bit. And I thought, here we go with another. You know, Marvel is just gonna yeah. You know, go into obscurity with Dippity. one of my favorite characters, sure. Dippity Duda, right? <laughs> but that's not what happened here. Uh, it rose. It, it rose. Okay. This was this was good. Uh, there is a new fist of Conchu. Uh, basically called Moon Hunter. Yeah. And uh, so we find out that Moon Knight is not the only fist of Conchu because a god has to have two fists, right? Sure. Right. And so, uh, so yes, that was really cool to see that character show up and them start to go at it because uh, they're different. Of course, one has all of the past fists downloaded into them yeah. because he has a normal mind. And, of course, our Moon Knight, Mark Spector, uh, he's got a fractured mind, so he didn't get yeah. all that. So he's come up as Moon Knight a whole different way. And so that difference between them is what's going to be the crux of their relationship going forward. I thought it was really well written. Nice. I enjoyed the artwork. and The action was great. And uh, I'm going to pick up number four. As long as it keeps me there, there I'll keep go. picking it up. But I, I, I liked it. It was good. How about Iron Fist? He's got a fist. He does. He's not in there? No. Okay. He should be. There's your second fist. Second fist. There what we go. What about Mephisto? <laughs> <laughs> he in there? He's got a fist. He does. He does. This is true. Yeah, let's stop talking about fisting, okay? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> anyway... Okay, great books. Good job. All right. All right, I guess I'm up next. We'll set these ones down. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So, your first book up here is Vinyl Number 1. Yes. This is by Image Comics. Yeah. Bueller, let me ask you a question. Sure. Was it good? It was good. And I was originally going to do number 4, but I wanted to do the first one because it starts off the series. I didn't want to jump in there and kind of ruin everything. Mm-hmm. Because it does take some twists and turns between number one. What you think number one is and what number four is, is two different things. Mm. As you can see, this gentleman on the cover, he's the main character. He is... I'm just trying to limit it to this issue right here when I'm talking about it. and uh, Because, like I said, there's more stuff that happens. In this first issue, you kind of get the impression that he's like some kind of serial killer. And like the FBI or the police or whatnot are setting him up, trying to get him to confess and stuff like that. And uh, that's how it is in this one. Then out of random, this lady shows up with like this group of people and takes uh, takes the officer away. And he's just sitting there at the table. And he's like, that's my best friend or something. It's really weird. It's bizarre. And uh, so they they take this guy to this like commune or whatnot, you know, because of his sister. And it kind of plops you in a story where there's a bunch of stuff already going on. So you're trying to figure it out. And then he just goes all Hannibal Lecter on pretty much everyone Mm. and uh because that's his buddy even though it's a police officer but then as you read it i get you get kind of confused because he's actually part of the police as well so it's kind of like a dexter type thing sure so i can see the similarities to dexter um that's all i really want to tell you because the rest of the stuff really gets evolved and things change and he's got this mask that's really kind of creepy looking it kind of reminds me of uh uh, I can't remember the name. Uh, the Nightbreed guy or whatnot with a little button on this thing. 
but uh, I really like it. It's fun. It's colorful. The, the, it kind of reminds me of cell shading, how some of the video games like Warlands oh, okay. yeah. would do. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. And I love this book. It's beautiful. It's bright. It's colorful. There's a lot of blood. It's gory. It's just a fun, interesting book. Number four just came out. It was good as well. Uh, hopefully, I get to that and talk about that some other time. But number one, if you can still get them, go get them. It's a awesome. good series. Cool deal. All yeah. right. Well, you got your next one up here, and this is King Spawn, number two. Yes. Of course, also from Image Comics. And Bueller. Yeah. Bum, ba, da, was it good? It was really good. And I just want to say ahead of time, these are also two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. These are also two ninety nine. They are a cardstock cover, which is great. Beautiful artwork, story, and all the different covers are two ninety nine for this. Just so and I believe the other ones that are coming out, the Gunslinger Spawn and the Cursed are also besides maybe number one, which will probably be thicker, but the rest of them are gonna be two ninety nine from what I understand. So hats off to Tom McFarlane for sticking with the two ninety nine price point on multiple books and putting it on a quality book. Okay, let's talk about this book itself. They're bringing back the Kincaid guy. Uh, the, the You know I'm talking about? Yeah. The, uh, the ice cream dude. Right. He, that guy's creepy, man. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is such a creepy character. But it's kind of uh, interesting that they're bringing him back. It's a sensitive thing to bring back, you know, and talk about. Um, that's kind of where they're going in this book. You know, you kind of get references to him and stuff, you know. And some other people kind of like worshipping him and kind of wanting him to come back or something like that and there's all there's like the there's like a mass shooting thing in here as well so that's a little little gruesome but spawn prevents it and stuff i've enjoyed it and also i want to tell you guys my my little uh, great nephew was born uh just a couple months back and uh i'm collecting the series for him awesome i want to get him a book from when his date of birth is and mm-hmm. i'll keep on buying these books because this is going to be an ongoing series and I'm probably going to try to put together a set for King Spawn. His name is Brody. Uh, or, I'm sorry. His name is Bodie. Mm-hmm. But I call him Baby Bueller. <laughs> you do. you got to see a picture of him. Yeah. <laughs> he I holds his mouth just like him. Yeah, I call him Baby Bueller because I'm the one who performed the ceremony between the, my nephew and his wife and stuff like that. So I got a little bit of credit. There we go. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm collecting the set for him. I'm pretty excited. Hopefully when he gets older, he'll be like, oh, cool, I got them all. So be kind of neat but i liked it i'm liking all the new spawn universe stuff and i'm really enjoying it so it was good that's awesome cool deal my next book is digital so i'll just put an image okay so and your next book is it's the uh the doc, dr strange one that that's out. right the uh, the death of dr strange yeah right? so death of dr strange by marvel comics mm-hmm. bueller i have to ask sure was it good i don't like it no no not really <sighs> it's okay i mean it's kind of he kind of goes to the academy and stuff, you know. He 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 prevents a crime. He goes to the academy, talks to the kids. The little what's the one with the little pumpkin head that's on fire all the time? Oh, uh, you the talked, uh, academy. Yeah, you talked. Uh, um, Whatever his name is, Dormammu's son. Yeah, he's like I, Doyle. Yeah, he's like there's something coming. I can feel it or whatnot. You know, mm-hmm. Doctor Strange's like, oh, that's kind of weird. So anyway, uh, no secret. Doctor Strange dies. I mean, that's in the title, okay? Mm-hmm. But then, like, another version of Doctor Strange shows up, and it looks like Jack Kirby's version of Doctor Strange, which is, I don't know if they just did that on purpose, but I thought it was pretty cool. I, that part was actually pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, the artwork was kind of Jack Kirby-ish, but it's almost like he knew he was going to die, so he made another copy of himself. Hmm. That's kind of an impression I get. And uh, so, I don't know. That's where it's going right now. I, I, it was okay. I, don't know. I had a little higher hopes for this book because there were, um, there were, you know, books in the past that you know the death of you know, yeah. a bunch of different characters, and this one, death of Doctor Strange, but we're getting multiple, you know, copies like a mini series. Yeah, and I know at least on the cover of the third one, Doctor Doom shows up, so I, was, yeah. I started to get excited about that. But I'm disappointed now hearing that number one wasn't all that great. Yeah, I don't know. I think some people are going to like it more than I did. It just seemed like the honestly, I'm not reading a lot of Marvel books right now. Mm-hmm. And there just seemed like a lot of uh, filler that was in there and stuff. But uh, it looked nice. It was a good looking book. And I, like I said, the ending when the, the I'm just going to call it the Kirby version of Doctor Strange. Show, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And stuff. So I'll give it an eh. An eh. Okay. Eh? Eh. Eh. <laughs> eh. So I'll buy, I probably wouldn't get another one. So That's too bad. Next issue or whatever it That's is. too bad. There so, you go. That's it. So what are you reading next week? Next week, I'm going to read Spawn 322, of course. Um, I'm going to read Crossover number 8, which I actually just read. 
Uh, that's an interesting book, to say the least, because this is the one coming off the Chip Zdarsky one. Right. And he addresses that in this book. That's awesome. And it's like, okay, it's really strange. <laughs> it, it's great. It's great. Uh, that fourth wall breaking thing is definitely there. And there's also one, uh, Unborn, number one, by Frank Gogol, a friend of mine. He's got a new book coming out. Looking forward to uh, hopefully getting a copy of that and reading that. So Awesome. What are you going to try to read next week? Uh, I'm going to read Berserker, number five. Nice. Uh, Something is Killing the Children, number 20. Yep. And uh, then Dark Hawk, number two. I'll figure I'll throw another Marvel book in there. Yeah. Hmm? I kind of looked at the Something is Killing the Children, number 20. Yeah. That looked pretty good. I can't wait. Most people can't. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be good. They want to know what kills that children. (laughs) I just want to know about her background. I think it's awesome. Um, There's also a couple of... uh, Thor comes out next week. Uh, Department of Truth comes out. Inferno comes out. I don't know if those are going to be any good, but there's uh, a few other books I'm probably going to pick up and try to give them a read and see if they... Or any good. So yeah. there you go. So that's our Was It Good segment brought to you by Comics on Coffee. Like I said, we're doing a giveaway for them. If you want to uh, win a bag of coffee, go to their website, pick out a flavor that you like, come back here in the comments, and just let us know what bag you like. And then if we pick your name, you'll win a free bag of coffee. And uh, last time, the winner never claimed it. So we never actually sent out a bag. Wow. So make sure you come back and check on the next video so you can find out who won. There so, you go. Uh, it does happen. It does. So anyway. Um, okay, let's go to our uh, random thoughts brought to you by our uh, lovely Patreon members. And uh, like I said before, I'm going to uh, a comment from last week that kind of popped up on the show. And I didn't, I haven't told Bob what it is. Um, last week we talked about speculation, and we'll kind of hit hit on it a little bit more. And just really, the topic was about the amount of people making speculation videos on YouTube and the quality of them and. Uh, who you should listen to, who you shouldn't listen to. I mean, we didn't really say that part, but there's just a lot of voices, and they can get clouded. You know, it's it's a lot of a lot of voices coming at you at once. Sure. And uh, you don't know whether you know should I listen to this? Should I listen to that? Bottom line is, we tell people, yeah, listen to them, but then go do your own research, do figure it out for yourself, and then if your research confirms what you heard, then you're probably on the right track. And that's kind of what we were trying to get across. Um, anyway, so this comment was from Verse Wonder Strikes says, uh, we are 30, 40, and sometimes 50 years old. Who's still reading comics like a nine-year-old kid at this age? Question mark. The world is all about money. Grow up, speculate, and make money. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So. Uh, I, I guess I guess I'm not growing up and I'm some kid because yeah. I love being a weekend, a Wednesday warrior. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I love reading my comics, and um, I've never felt anything less yeah, or or that I'm some kid because I do it. Um, I've I, I enjoy reading comics, and yeah. you know how I read them when when I was a kid is much different than how I read them now. Um, and we ought, we constantly say all the time, I mean, you read these stories; they're they're great. Yeah, half half of the content on TV and movies out there right now more, more are comic book related than you even know. Yeah, and and so I, I, I I'm you know it sounds like. I don't know where this guy's coming from, but it sounds like, you know, he was disgruntled with the topic, maybe. I don't know. But uh, really, um, you know, I, I don't agree with him. Yeah. Um, let me just th- talk about our audience who watches here. Uh, most of our audience is 30, 40, and 50 years old. That's the 80% of our audience falls in that demographic, like he mentioned. Um, and the rest is 20s or over 50 to be honest but most of them are 30 and above mm-hmm. and it's probably more like 90 percent of the audience um and we're still reading comics like you said like we're a nine-year-old kid i read more than i read when i was a nine-year-old yeah kid. and i read a lot more than i did now i want to say this you know he also said the world is about money at a certain stage in your life i believe that everyone feels that way and it just matters where you're at in life and, uh, you know, whether you got a family or you're working, you're, you're making money, you're doing all this stuff, and that's your, all your concern. I think we all kind of go through that. And I think, obviously, this gentleman or, or lady is probably in that position. Um, eventually, you realize that's not what it's about. And my father always told me he doesn't want money, he wants time. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care about the money, he just wants time. He wants the time back. He wants the time back that he spent shooting baskets with his kids. He doesn't want the money, you know. He doesn't care about that. It's yeah. not about money. It's about time and what you do with your time. Yeah. Um, you know, he also says, grow up, speculate, and make money. Uh, I mean, if that's the way you want to live your life, 
you can do that. I mean, if that's if you're all about making money, and that's all that you really focus on, and that's kind of the impression that we get from this comment. If you're happy, great, but honestly, you're probably missing out on a lot of really great stuff because, like I said, it's not about the money. It's not about the... I'll put it to you this way. I'll use a basketball reference, okay? I don't remember my dad buying me a basketball, and I wasn't... I was like, oh, I got this brand new basketball, and, you know, it's it's it cost 20 bucks. It's a Spalding and all there. It wasn't that. It was when we went and shot baskets together and spent that time. It's not about the money that it costs to get there. It's about what we did with the time that we spent together. I don't care about the money. You know, or, or he bought me a motorcycle, okay? And it wasn't the... I don't remember him... Like, I don't put the value on him buying me the motorcycle and buying me that. It was when he taught me how to ride it. And when we, when we went riding together and exploring and stuff like that. That's the time, okay? That's worth more than the motorcycle, Okay, and whether it's hiking in the woods or, or buying a motorcycle or a car, a boat, or whatever it is, I think it's just a stage in your life. And I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm. If that's where you're at right now, the verse wonder strikes, no problem. Okay, maybe down the line you look at things differently. Maybe you don't. Okay, but I'm hoping that maybe you do, and maybe it uh, it hits. Because I remember having that conversation with my father, and him telling me it's not. Uh, it's it's the time that's more valuable and my I have a family member right now who is kind of going through the thing oh I need to provide I need to uh, get nice things and stuff like that and, and stuff I'm like man you're going to miss stuff is going to pass you right by because you're trying to provide all this stuff to where the person on the other end really doesn't care about that stuff they, they just want you and quality time with you that's right and that's what's important so yeah. Anyway, I saw that comment. It kind of rubbed me the wrong way. He wasn't trying to be malicious. I don't want to no, take no, nothing no, against no. him. Uh, but, you know, obviously we were talking about speculation. We were talking about making money and the different uh, voices that were talking about that stuff. Um, there was a little bit more to this comment as far as other comments attached to it as well. Um, to each their own. Um, I just, personally, I just look at things differently. And I enjoy, you know, I mean, grow up, speculate. I'm growing up and I'm one of the happiest guys you're going to meet and uh i wouldn't trade it for anything so yeah. and i'm probably one of the poorest guys you'd be <laughs> as far as money wise so right right, right. but uh and, and then also a little bit more on that uh on last week's topic you know i kind of got a little bit of a, you know blowback to like oh you, i can really tell that you hate speculation and stuff like that or speculation videos and that wasn't my People tend to, for one, people tend to read the title and they don't even watch the video and they'll comment. Like, there was like three or four comments on the video before it came out. Right. And it was just, you know, crap comments and stuff. I'm like, how do you know? You haven't even read, you haven't even watched it, you know? Right. And then some other comments were like, you know, you're, you're, you're just, you know, crapping on speculation videos. And that was not the case, you know? I crapped more on my own videos than I did anything, you know, on the ones I have. I just, I try to put out there. And some people don't have the ability. And I don't know why this is. They don't have the ability to either say yes or no. There is something in between. Between you hate it or you or you don't hate it. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is me saying, like, hey, there's stuff out there that's worth your time. There's stuff out there that's not worth your time because it's not providing good information. And it's providing information that benefits them only. And that's what I wanted to point out. Not the, not like, I'm not like crapping on all speculation videos. I'm just telling everyone, hey. Do your own research, find it. If it's reliable stuff, then go to that. Right. But don't just settle and just assume. We pointed out Jim Comics, perfect example. He mm -hmm. doesn't do it anymore. I wish he did. But you know what? We were pointing out the stuff that was good about it. And I don't know if you guys noticed this, but if it's something good, I will always name them. Yeah. If it's something negative, I never name who that is. Okay? And that's something I, I just, I will, even when I don't like someone, I still don't name it or whatnot. But if it's positive, even though I might not like that person or whatnot, I still say their name. You've always done that. And I've always done that. And, uh, you know, I think that people tend to just hear what they want to hear. Yeah. And they kind of go from there. But I, I'm not a hater against speculation videos or speculators. I'm a lover of quality videos, quality research, and good information that helps you make buying decisions or reading decisions or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm not for information that doesn't provide that to you right so i think I, I think i think the channel our channel has always been or the, at least this show has always been about 
bringing awareness to you know the comic collector as much as possible. Yeah. We don't want to see anybody get hurt. We don't want to see anybody leaving comics. You know, we want everybody to enjoy what they do, and so a, a little bit of information and perspective can yeah. help that go a long way. Yeah. We just want to see you win. And we're not trying to take a stance one way or the other. I mean, we're, we're of course, going to put our opinions, uh, but we're in no way trying to slam any channels or anything like that. We're just trying to bring awareness to the situation. Nine times out of ten, we're asking you the question. Yeah. And your comments are what is driving. Yeah, you're the comments. Right? We're reading your comments. <laughs> so it's coming from you guys. Exactly. And so... Um, you know, as much as possible, you, you know, we've never tried to, you know, put too much of our opinion saying this is what it needs to be yeah. uh, more than at least giving our two cents on yeah. it. And of course, highlighting what you guys are saying as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, really when it comes down to it, you know, if you want to speculate, that's fine. If you want to live your life that money is the, the, the main issue, that's fine. Uh, but I, I want to just say I've had the money. Yeah, uh, I've had a ton of money, and when I had it, I was probably more miserable then than I ever was. Yeah, and that's just the honest truth. Yeah, I did a lot of great things with it, uh, but really, my life was hollow. Um, you know, and then I I ended up losing it all, and I went homeless. And uh, my trek back up into life was the greatest yeah. adventure I had ever been on. And uh, the meaning of life really is quality time and learning to be content no matter what your circumstances yeah. are. And if you can do that, you've won. Yeah. No, see, I've never had all the money, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got some other stuff on uh, sure. random uh, thoughts here. Uh, real quick, I just want to give an update on the uh, Bueller bus. I've been working on it. We just got done ripping out the floors, um, so I'm going to be putting new floors in. I'm going to be taking some pictures and probably showing them in the next week or so. And then from there, we're going to start on the ceiling. Redo the ceiling. I just ordered all the solar system. The, it's going to have three solar panels on top of the roof, a couple of batteries, all that good stuff. It costs quite a bit of money, uh, but it's on its way. So I'm getting all the stuff, the lights, the fans, and everything. I'm going to put all that together. It's still a ways away. People still think, oh, are you coming to my town next week? No, I'm still <laughs> not leaving until like after, after, next year. After so, winter. <laughs> yeah, after winter. So I might take a little trip here and there, you know, mm -hmm. but really I'm not really leaving until February, March, officially leaving and stuff like that. So there's a lot to do. And uh, just getting the floor out was a lot of work. And uh, thank you to my son who helped me do that. So that was kind of nice. But that's just a quick update. And uh, the bus is actually over at my nephew's house because it's down the street. He's got all the tools I need to do it. So that's where we're working on it. So I'm trying to do like two or three days a week over there working on the bus and buying the material and stuff. And uh, I might be able to hit there tomorrow, I'm hoping. so. Anyway. Working on the happy bus. Exactly. So anyway, that's kind of the update on the bus. So let's talk about a couple shows really quick. Mm -hmm. And you saw the latest episode of the What If. Yeah. And I, apparently it's still going. I don't know. Ten. Let's say, say there's ten episodes. Yeah, there's like two more episodes to okay. go or something like that. So you had a, you you didn't like this one as much. It was all right. I mean, you know, uh, the the topic on this one was what if Thor was an only child. So yeah. you know, you didn't have Loki. Wasn't he an only child? Well, technically, but I mean, he grew up with Loki as his brother. Yeah, but it's not really his brother. No, and that's what they did inside of this. Instead of. Odin taking him and adopting him, uh, he basically gave him back and he became the Prince of Jotunheim, which sure. he was supposed to be. And uh, so the, the premise of it is, is that without Loki there to temper Thor, uh, Thor grew up differently and yeah. didn't learn the lessons that he would have with Loki there. And so when you meet Thor... Uh, he's pretty much Mr. Party Prince of the Universe. Sure. Uh, you know, you have um, uh, uh, Natalie Portman's character, uh, Jane Foster. Yeah. Uh, Jane Foster basically looks at a piece of the universe and sees that it's been burnt out. And um, the, the same anom an anomaly that burnt it out is now in Earth's galaxy. And uh, the only thing that's different is Thor shows up and all these terrestrial people are coming down to Earth to party. Hmm. And uh, so now... Like here's, scumbag. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, That's actually what that is. And, 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 uh, and so, you know, uh, now the Earth is in danger of becoming, you know, completely depleted and all that other type yeah. of stuff. And um, so there's a lot of hijinks in it. Um, I don't know. There's a bunch of intersecular feminism inside of it. And it's it's campy. It's and There's all kinds of just like, I, I don't know. Uh, the end the end credits were kind of cool. You see Ultron show up with yeah. all the Infinity, Infinity Gems on it. Um, but 
I don't know. I guess it was okay. Yeah. You know, it's not, it wasn't my favorite episode. I'll just say that. Yeah. So it should really be called What If Odin Didn't Steal a Baby? Right. <laughs> Basically it. That's what he did. He stole a yeah, baby. He stole a baby. Yeah. <laughs> he did kidnap her. So, but, you know, I guess it was okay. What's the next one, you know? Um, I don't. I didn't look it up, but I do know that Ultron showing up is supposed to be a huge thing because with all of these different universes, yeah. um, it's supposed to be, uh, eventually, you're going to see how they all tie together um, because the rumor has it that inside of the MCU, you may see some of these alternate universe characters in the normal MCU okay. showing up. And so... Tying it together is going to be an important thing for the MCU as a whole going together. And so the last two episodes are going to leverage that, from what I understand. That sounds great. I can't wait. <laughs> I still, They're really I, leaning into the multiverse. I've thing. only seen the first two. I still, yeah. I don't really have, I don't, maybe I'll watch it someday. We'll see. Uh, there was a show that I am watching, and uh, Why the Last Man, we talked about it last week, and I'm done. All right, just like that. Yeah, it's me and my daughter watched it together when she was here. And my daughter was like, what is this? She's like, this is horrible. And she started pointing some things out, being a lady, mm-hmm. you know. And considering the Why the Last Man is about ladies pretty much inheriting the earth. Mm-hmm. And there's only one man left. And I'm sorry, but if you've watched the show, within a week, everything goes to shit. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, that would never happen. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm like, well, I guess that's what they think would happen or whatnot. And, mm-hmm. uh, because it was like just, you know, it literally went Mad Max within like a month. Right. You know, and uh, like there's nothing, there's no resources left. And it's like half the population is gone. You think there would be more resources available, you know. Right, the right. crops are still growing, you know. The fields are still out there to get food. But no, it's like a barren wasteland of just like nothing's, you know, a, you trade a like a alternator for uh, food or something like that. I was like, well, you know, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, anyway, I didn't like it. Uh, like I said, my daughter pointed some things out. I was like, yeah, this is kind of dumb or whatnot, you know, and uh, I don't know if the series was like that or the comic book was like that, but yeah, I'm just, I'm probably not going to watch the rest. So I, four episodes in, I'm done. Done. Yeah. I don't oh, think that's you, too you bad. Haven't, you haven't seen any of it? I haven't seen any of it yet. I was going to watch it, but yeah. I don't know, based upon your your um, you know evaluation of it. I don't know if I'll, I'll get into it. I, I had very little hope with the show anyway because yeah. it took a long time for it to actually come to fruition. Uh, they had so many writers that had been you know uh, uh, you know on the you know project mm-hmm. that left and then other ones came in different directors and so before even the pandemic hit it had been you know. Yeah. Lifted up and scrapped, lifted up and scrapped multiple times. That's always a bad sign. Yeah. And so when they finally said, well, it's coming out, I had very low hopes for it to begin with. So yeah. maybe my assumption is correct on that. But uh, it, that's too bad because it's an amazing series. Yeah. The only character I like in there is like the, uh, she's like, she's like the uh, undercover security for the president. And she's like with the president's son. Mm-hmm. She's the only character I like. She, she's, she's a badass. But the rest of the, even though, like, the president's son, he's kind of a little wimpy dude and stuff. And, like, the, I don't care for any other way, so. Just, yeah. just the Secret Service. That's too thing. bad. So there you go. Sorry. Why the last man? <laughs> um, real quick, I also want to mention next week our topic. Uh, we don't know for sure if Bob's going to be here. He might have some plans. If not, we'll probably have a guest. But I want to talk about auctions and auction etiquette. Um, obviously, I just got done doing some auctions mm-hmm. on the channel over the last three weeks. Thank you so much to everyone who purchased and uh, participated or just watched. A lot of people watch shows and stuff. Uh, but we want to talk about auction etiquette and this, the proper procedure. Should you purchase things on YouTube and auctions, stuff like that, and just everything you need to be aware of for that as well. I've also had some opportunities come my way because people watch our auctions. Mm-hmm. I've actually had some publishers reach out and want me to host auctions for them mm. through publishers and uh i didn't give a yes or no answer i kind of left it up in the air i want to hear what you guys think would you be, guys be interested in original artwork and uh hosted on my channel from publishers or, or and stuff like that and uh if you guys would be interested in that let me know and maybe we can put that together and uh and uh, sell some pretty cool things so i don't know very cool i don't know could, could happen yeah so anyway auction etiquette don't say nothing in the comments down below wait for the preview video then Put the comments in there. Comment away. And then we can go from there. So, anyway, that's about it, man. Mm -hmm. 
I think we've talked about stuff. We've talked stuff. about stuff that we liked. Yeah. You talked about stuff you didn't like. I did. You didn't like that one. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> but you probably didn't like it. <laughs> hey, there's always something, right? Yeah. I think uh, I think I'm, we're doing... I don't know if you're doing it, but I think Thursday is a... Uh, yeah, I'm not doing it. You're not doing it? Yeah, I, I told Robbie this morning, I, I, I'm just like, I'm not prepared for it. Yeah, so Thursday we're doing the comic book of the month thing. I think it's on Robbie's channel. I think so. And I've read four books, but I can I can handle it. I just pretend. <laughs> Maybe I will show up there, because I, I think I've read six. <laughs> I'm going to read a couple. I can pretend it. I can, uh, I can entertain for a couple of hours. There you go. So, so check that out on Thursday, I think. Mm-hmm. Um... I think that's about it. I can't think of anything else. I had fun talking. Don't forget the giveaways. The one is already kind of the, for the Patreon members, so I'll just go through my Patreon list and uh, uh, pick a random winner for that. The other one is for the coffee. Go check out one of the coffee blends. Let us know which one you like in the comments down below. We'll pick a winner for that as well. We'll let you know next week. That's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else. Yeah. I'm tired from working on that, man. I, was, I, bet, we, I we, bet. Yesterday was like a nine-hour day just ripping stuff off the ground because you have to go rip all that plastic off. There. That took I forever. Bet. And we had a grinder. We had to grind the grind the bolts off that we couldn't get off. So it's just, and the sparks are flying everywhere and fires are being lit. <laughs> Light know. the fires and burn the tires, baby. We don't know what we were doing. <laughs> but we're having fun, right? That's awesome. So anyway... Cool. Anything? Yeah, man. Uh, I fi- finally filmed a video. It's no, not, you didn't. Yeah, I did. It'll drop uh, before this show airs on Monday. All right. I just, it's just a mini haul video, the stuff I got from Rose City Comic Con. And... Right, I'll believe it when I see it. All right. Check it out, man. All right. <laughs> I will. Other than that, man, you just, you know, just plugging along. Happy birthday. Thank er- you. Early birthday. Appreciate that. It's coming up pretty, pretty soon. Pretty soon. Friday. Yeah. Oh, Friday. Yeah. Okay. Next week. Next. This next week, Friday. This coming week. Yeah. Like four days. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's Monday. Even though it's right. Monday. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. What do you friend. want for your birthday? I already got it. What else do you want? Uh, spend time with my family. Oh, see time. <laughs> and comic books, apparently. Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. All right, Bob. I'm, I'm done with you. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're all done. Go ahead. Don't it, forget though. to like and subscribe. You know what to do. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.